Okay, so we're starting off in this week's video exactly where we left off in last week's. Now, this super build um, that we used on this has been a great product, especially for a fiberglass body. And a lot of you guys have been asking um, a lot of questions about working with fiberglass and different bits and pieces. So stay tuned throughout the video because um, I will be dropping in little tips on things to do and also answering some of the questions that I asked. Um, I answered in the comments for the first video so anyone who hasn't obviously read through all the comments can get some of the information that I've passed on to other people. So I'll be honest, the most part of this is time lapse that I'm running through here but I'm going to talk you through what I'm doing and where I'm doing it um, and why I'm doing it because this is 24 hours worth of work um, across two days in this 10 minute video. Now. Starting off on the super build, because it's got that inbuilt guide coat with the pink, then you don't need to guide coat this to start off with. My recommendation with the super build would be start off coarser than you think you need. So we started off on this with a 120 on a block. Now, I picked Dura blocks for this, rather than our standard flatter, stiffer blocks that I can use with a vacuum, just because um, the Dura blocks do have a slight bit of flex, and not one panel on this car is perfectly flat so to speak everything has got a curve um, or a little bit of a concave shape to it somewhere so using a completely hard flat solid block wouldn't be the best way to go so we're using like mesh sanding pads on the blocks um, i'm using a variety of blocks literally i must have used maybe seven or eight different types of blocks different lengths different sizes different width in order to block this down i'm going to do the whole first stage with the p120 now, once I've done this, I can see where any lower areas are in the car. Um, obviously, as I'm going across, you'll probably notice that a lot of this is coming back off, which someone said to me the other week was crazy that you just put all that money's worth of product to take a lot of it back off. And you can see there now where it's starting to sort of grin through to the body underneath. Now, the whole point is that you only want this product to sit in the low spots. So by giving it a really nice, slow, even block all over, especially when you've got a car like this that's got a lot of curved surfaces. Um, you really want to take your time, make sure that you're blocking in every different direction. I tend to try and block diagonally, lengthways, so I'm doing like the length and the width at all times. Um, it's difficult when you're doing a job like this. You need to be rotating and having the block following um, the concave shape of the car and following the lines and everything as you're going along. Now, I'm not fussed if I rub through this because literally, like you can see on the quarter, it's only sat now in the low areas. So unless there's an area with an issue, then literally, in effect, the super build's coming off. Um, there will be some bits that are really low. So where those really lows are, the super build will show that up because there will be slightly unsanded areas. So I'd go across this whole car meticulously with the 120 to start off with. And this stuff is tough to sand. You'll go through a lot of pads, as you'll probably see me doing throughout this video. But you've got a really, really good spray filler there. And if you wanted to, like I said, you could work up the grades and paint on top of this. Um, for a job like this, this isn't what we're using it for. Uh, we're using it as kind of like an epoxy to seal all the body. And then also as a very high build um, polyester spray filler. So I'm going around this stage by stage, um, bit by bit, and I'm separating it out into sections. So we've done like the wing and then the front and then the other wing, and then we've gone to like a quarter panel and then we've gone to half the roof and then we've gone to the scoop and so on and so on. Just to split it up in your head because this was literally a 12 hour day of solid blocking start to finish and it's a long day it's not a small task to block out um, a big car like this and get it perfectly flat now once I've done all this what I'll do is I'll give everything a clean down blow everywhere off and then I'll get a roll of masking tape out and I'll go around and mark out all the low areas so any little low areas any pinholes any issue areas that need filler I'll go around and mark them out first before I go mix in the filler. Now, the particular filler that we use um, now is the Rage um, Optex filler. It's the one with the color changing technology, which we're just gonna run through in the next part of the video. 
on the filler stage on this. So everything's pretty much blocked out now bar the door shuts and the engine bay. And those areas aren't too bad. So this is the Rage Optex filler. As you'll see, it's very pink. Um, it's got a blue hardener, unlike normal fillers, which have a red, normally have a red hardener. Um, and this is all part of the color changing part. So you only need a small amount of hardener in your filler. You don't need to leather it in. Over hardening filler will cause, or putting too much hardener in your filler will cause massive issues, especially if you're using the red hardener. It can bleed through the dyes in the hardener itself can bleed through your primer and your paintwork down the line. So you want to be careful. Now you want to mix this up to make sure that you can't see any bright pink and you can't see any bright blue anymore. So everything's one nice, easy, even, consistent color. And then once I've got to that stage, what I tend to do is spread it out across the board nice and thin. So it'll stop it heating up as much um, and heating up as quickly. So you'll get a little bit of a longer working time with your filler. Now, filling is a bit of an art form, I think. Um, you want to try and get it on as close to where you want to sand it as possible. Um, you don't want to put a massive ass big lump on it. You want to try and get a nice smooth skim in there because at the end of the day, the worse you put it on, the more sanding you're going to have to do. So I'm just working around this shell now, little bit by little bit, putting the filler in the areas that I've marked out with the tape so that know that everything is going in the right place and only in the areas that I want it. Um, I don't need to do too much filler work in this car. Um, the customer who actually owns this car has done a lot of filler work on this already. Um, it's been done very well as well, um, which is quite different normally when customers bring you something i find that's been filled it's never really great um and their idea of what is good and our idea of what is good is two worlds apart the guy that's done this has actually done a really really good job of the filler work on it there's just one or two little areas that i wasn't happy with um but at the end of the day this is why he's brought it to a shop to have it finished off and tickled up that last bit um to get the body perfectly in shape before the paint goes down because the particular color this is going the paint cost on this is phenomenal so we want to make sure that this is 110 percent before we do it so having a nice smooth skim like that it saves your materials on your filler it's going to save you a lot of elbow grease as far as rubbing the filler down as well um you know it's at the end of the day for us especially as a business you know it's all about time and money um and this filler isn't particularly cheap. It's like 60 quid a tin, I think, with a vat. But the color changing technology means that, as you can see here, over a short course of time, um, this will change from the pink that you see in the bottom left to green. And as everyone know, green means go. So if you do a car like this and you may say mix two or three boards of filler um, and do different bits in different areas and you want to know which bit's dry, it's really good because visually it's bright green like it is there and you are then good to go and start sanding it. You still get that tiny bit of a pink bit around the outside every now and again, but it's nothing to worry about. So the next day, once um, the car had been blocked out with 120 and then all the filler work had been done and I just knocked off the filler with the 120, we then re goated the whole car, the door shuts, all inside the light holes, absolutely everywhere. And then we'll block this out again with the P240 to make sure that everything's ripped back as much as possible. Make sure that that layer of super wheel is really nice um, and smooth. And just basically taking everything back and refining it ready for the high build to go over. And then unbelievably what we'll be doing is then blocking and going through this process again in high build, but with some finer grades. But we'll cover the high build application the high build that we're using and also the blocking stage on the high build in part three so i hope you guys have enjoyed this little insight into how we'd prep um a fire blast shell like this um oh there's a few little bits that you might change if you've got cracks and stuff but we'll cover that in another video because that's it for this week's video guys i will see you next friday for part three on this tvr repaint that we're doing bye for now
be 